Now it's time for today's perspective. And by the year 2100, so that's in just 81 years' time, there could be no ice left at all on the Alps, even the highest and coldest of them. That perhaps the most alarming warning of new research on the European Alps, how they'll fare under the world's warming climate. And the research shows that the least that is set to happen is that glaciers will lose two thirds of their present day ice volume, a massive change for all, not least of course, for example, just for the skiing industry, which is such a vital part of the French economy. Research has been done by a team in Switzerland and one of them, Harry Zekalari, a climate scientist with the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich, joins us on the programme now. Thanks very much for being with us. Just first of all, tell us then um, how bad you think this could be. Um, well, as you mentioned very correctly, we see that by the end of the century, if we take a, a case where there's going to be a lot of warming, so that's really a case where we're not going to invest in any new technologies, where we keep emitting a lot of, of greenhouse gases. We see indeed that for the European Alps, we may be in a case where there won't be anything left. We'll, we'll have 90% or more uh, mass loss of the present day glaciers. And just to give you an idea, at present, uh, we're having, if we, if we look at the present day ice volume, that's about 100, uh, that's about 100 cubic kilometers and translating Olympic swimming pools, that's about 40 million Olympic swimming pools. And we may be losing most of these by the end of the century. How can you tell then? On the How other did you hand, do the research? You were mentioning before, well, the, the research is done, we, we use a computer model to do this. So we use a computer model in which we simulate how a glacier evolves over time. And then we get climatic information from climate scientists, which we put in. And then depending on which climatic scenarios we follow, we make projections for the future. And as you also mentioned in the beginning, if we take a good case, so that's a case where we will invest in new technologies, in green technologies, where we will emit less, so we'll have less warming in the future, then we see that by the end of the century, we'll have about one third or a bit more of the ice remaining. So in every case, we're going to lose a lot of ice in the European Alps. I mean, 2100, in a way, it seems like a long way off. But of course, it's absolutely nothing for our children and for our grandchildren. And presumably, this is gradual as well. I mean, it's going to start having an impact. Perhaps a lot of people would say it already is having an impact on, on how we live now. Yes, yes, definitely. And um, it really is something that is happening now. And in fact, what we see, what we also shown in our, uh, have shown in our research, is in fact there's also a large part of the loss that is committed. And by this I mean we know that between now and 2050, it doesn't really matter how emissions will evolve, we know that we're going to lose about half of the ice mass. So of these 40 million Olympic swimming pools of ice equivalent, we're going to lose half of them in the coming 30 years. And that's really due to the fact that glaciers respond very slowly to climatic changes. So whatever happens, we're going to lose about half of it in the coming, in the coming three decades. We'll lose about half of the ice mass in the European Alps and the consequences will be huge. I mean, inevitably, with stories like this, uh, there will be climate change deniers who are watching, saying, you know, how on earth can they tell? This is just a blip. It's, you know, it's happened before. It can happen again. The, 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 the climate might go back the other way. How can you be so convinced then that, and how can you convince them that what you're saying is, is accurate? Well, typically what we do with our computer models, if we want to make simulations for the future, is first we, we test them for the past. We see if they're able to reproduce what occurred. And we see that the models are able to reproduce. So these computer models were able to simulate how glaciers were in the past fairly, fairly accurately. Uh, also, the, the, the way that the climate is going to evolve in the future, there's a, a general consensus in the scientific community. Every once in a while in the media, you hear some stories about deniers, but in the scientific community, there's no doubt. It's like... Uh, hesitating whether gravity exists or, or something alike. It's very clearly shown and it's been shown throughout the years that there's a very clear impact of the way that we as a society, as humans are, are acting. We know that we're having an impact on, on the climate. And we also know that just you, you have, we have some scenarios for the future. So we don't know exactly in which direction it will evolve. But we do know uh, that we're, go we're going to keep emitting. Our society is based on this. We need this for our industries. We need this to travel. We need this for many things. So we know we will keep emitting. And we know that if we keep emitting, temperatures will rise. And as a response for our specific study, we know that glaciers will respond to this by losing a lot of their mass. So is it just too late for us now? I mean, is there any way back from this? Is there anything that, that the human race can do at this stage to, to change this? 
Well, it's definitely not too late. So there's this part, I'm speaking always specifically now for the European ops, there's this committed part, but I really want to stress that for the second part of the century, we play a big role and we can make a difference between what will remain or what won't remain. So we, 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 we do have a role, but it's sure that a part of the of the of of how the glaciers will evolve in the near term is already determined. But on the longer term, we as a as people, as society, the way we'll act, the way the decisions our policymakers will make, for instance, whether we'll try to follow the Paris agreements from uh, from December 2015, this will definitely have a large impact. So, no, I, I wouldn't say that we don't have a role. We do have a big role for this. And we might have a role, but presumably that would just slow it down. I mean, if uh, the Paris agreements were fully implicated uh, and even more, perhaps, effort was, was put in, I mean, maybe it, it, we might be in this situation in, say, 160 years' time instead of 81? No, that's not really correct with the Paris Agreement. What we see is that we'll try to peak the emissions very soon and then let them go down to zero in the coming decades. And by doing this, we know what the goal of the Paris Agreement, in fact, is to stop the, is to stop the warming and to try to limit it to 1.5 degrees compared to pre-industrial levels. And in fact, we show not only for glaciers, uh, we, we know that um, for glaciers, but for ice sheets, also for ocean currents, for many things, we know that there's some thresholds. And we know that if we're able to limit the temperatures, for instance, to 1.5 degrees, we know that the consequences will be much more limited. We know that sea level rise will, will be more limited. For instance, for Antarctica, we know that a part may be at stake and may collapse if we go over two degrees. So it's really important we try to limit it. So it's not that it will be postponed. If we can reach this and if we we're able to stabilize temperatures at a given level, then, for, then there's going to be way less impacts. And probably also just from an economic point of view, it's going to cost way less to try to prevent that and stop of having to repair the damage that will come from this. Good to have you with us on the programme today. Thanks very much for being with us. Harry uh, Zekalari, climate scientist with the uh, Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich, joining us uh, live there from Zurich. Thanks, for him, uh, thanks to him, rather, for being with us on the programme today.